seen. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Happy podcast day. Yay, podcast day. <laughs> it's our favorite day of the week. It is, 100%. <laughs> that couch looks comfy behind you. Th- that one is just there? The white one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That I slept on that couch for about two months. Because when I moved in, I was like, I'm going to get a new mattress. It says it's in stock. Cool, they won't deliver it for two months. Because <laughs> it was not in stock. <laughs> so Liars. that couch is comfy. Yeah, I highly recommend I'm glad to hear it. I was thinking you were like, no, it sucks. I had to sleep on it for two months and my back is permanently broken now. <laughs> but I'm glad it's good. I'm glad it's comfy and probably mm-hmm. don't have back problems. Maybe you do. Uh, but yeah, wonderful. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's a little short because it's a three-seater, but I'm tall. <laughs> I had to turn to yeah, look. I was going to say, <laughs> you're, you're a little tall. A little yeah. taller than couch size, generally. Uh-huh. The only problem is it's in my lounge room. Which means my housemate is out here like all the time, so oh, it's right. like, oh, he he stays up to midnight. I I, I gotta go to sleep at six p.m. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. So how does so, that work? Poorly. Uh, he just put up with me snoring. Okay, you didn't yeah. wake you up. No, no. Nice. You're a good sleeper. Yeah, <laughs> I can sleep through a lot. It's good skill. Yeah. Good skill to mm-hmm. have. Mm-hmm. It is wonderful. Well. What is going on in the world? There's a lot of new stuff announced for the MCU for Phase 5, but like... Eh. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I mean, okay. The one thing I am excited about is they're bringing back uh, Matt Murdock to do Daredevil. Sure. So we're getting some more Netflix Daredevil stuff, which I think... I don't know. It's definitely some of the best stuff that's come from the Marvel Universe on TV over the last 10 years. Sure, yeah. I really, Um... really enjoyed the... Uh, the stuff they did on Netflix. So I'm glad that they resurrected that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Other than that, I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. This, if this knocks anyone's socks off and when starts hearing buzz about it, then sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll give it a chance. But there's nothing in phase four that I watched where I'm like, man, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. What was in phase four? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could say that about just about every phase except for like phase one. So I know that's like Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. All right, like, um, yeah, so true. No Way Home was pretty very good. good. That yeah. knocked my socks off. That's true. Love and Thunder is very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's but not like not... knock your socks off, but it's 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 a good movie. It's good. Um, I like Black Widow. I like it more than fine. I like Shang Chi, but I don't hate Shang Chi. Right, both um, fine readings. Hmm. Um, Hawkeye TV I mean, show is K. Moon Knight was okay. My sister asked me about Moon Knight the other day, and I was like, "Oh yeah, Moon Knight. That was a thing." <laughs> yeah. It's just nothing sticking. Nothing's like, man, that was incredible. Mm-hmm. Like I do really appreciate Oscar Isaac's performance in mm-hmm. Moon Knight, and I think mm-hmm. he was great. But was literally incredible. everything else about that show, I'm like, there was a hippo. <laughs> and a boat going across uh, sand. There was an alligator. <laughs> uh, and then they undid basically the entire ending and like the post credit scene where also Isaac still got a kind of <laughs> plot twist, a third personality. <laughs> you know? That they teased at us the whole time mm-hmm. and then showed him in a post credit scene at the very end of season one. What mm. a choice. What a choice they made. Yeah. It was a choice. Um, yeah. So Multiverse of Madness was like, mm, it's good. Like, again, yeah. I'm not really coming away from stuff being like, that was a waste of time. Right. But I'm this also is... not coming away from stuff going like, yes. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. No, I get it. <laughs> so I just yeah. think it's going to be more of the same here. And I do. Okay. I do think a big part of this is that. Disney's like, we need new content for Disney Plus all the time. Mm. We need it so that Marvel fans can't feel like they can unsubscribe from us at any point during the year. There's either something happening mm. in the Star Wars or Marvel universes, mm-hmm. or there's something happening in like two weeks. So there's no right. reason to unsub, right? That is what they so, want. <laughs> yeah. So they came to Feige and they were like, yo, we need content all the time. And he was like, but that's a lot. <laughs> But they're doing it because their overlords are making them do it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, quality suffering as a result. 
I don't think that this is a, like a new, like, oh crap, we need to get them subscribing. Because there was, I vaguely remember hearing on a podcast like in 2013 that, that Disney's plan was to have five superhero movies a year. Um, okay. Like even way back then. So the idea that they wanted to have a glut of content is not new. No. Um, five superhero movies a year and 10 new shows on Disney Plus is a is it Massive 10 new shows burden. in a year? No, five or six. Because I'm looking at phase five, and it's going to be six movies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shows, one of which will be in 2024. So that's not even next year. So yeah. five. Yeah, five shows and six movies, or four movies, because two of them will be in 2024. Uh, yeah. So, it's not like terribly shows, far off. No, no, that's true. Well, and just the amount of content you're producing for a show that six episodes of TV compared to a two hour movie. Mm. Yeah, maybe the movie has bigger effects and maybe it's more work in some ways, but just the sheer amount of hours of screen time you're producing for a Loki is three times as much as you are for a movie. Mm. so i'm just saying it's a lot mm. yeah it's, it's a lot of stuff but i don't think it can't be done and i can't and i'm not saying it can't be I mean, done well <laughs> like being done <laughs> i mean obviously they're doing it <laughs> right but the, like all the stuff that's in like a tv show is not the stuff that's also in movies you know like they're not doing a lot of crossover stuff there so you should right. be able to write individual stories at different scales and show them on the TV show that aren't the movies. Like yeah. it should be very, very, very feasible because it know, is feasible. They've been doing it, and most of the right. TV shows are fine, right? I mean, fine. I, I would, like, uh, I would unsubscribe from Disney Plus at this point, though. Uh, right, right. I mean, so, so their plan was to keep people sub to Disney Plus mm-hmm. by throwing so much content out there, they felt like they couldn't leave. But mm. inadvertently, I think, created a situation where everything's fine and nothing's <laughs> catching fire and nothing's making people feel like I can't leave Disney Plus. They have well, awesome stuff, you know? Right, but I mean, I don't think Marvel is the solely, like, uh, like I don't think people, it's like the make or break point for Disney Plus. I think... no. They could easily just be like, yeah, we're going to take a back seat on Marvel for the next three months. We'll have like one show, maybe. They don't have to do it like this because they've got other properties. They've got Star Wars they can lean on. They could have a new Star Wars show uh, every other month and then the in-between months of Marvel yes. stuff. They and could they're, talk- yes, they're doing that with Star Wars and the same thing's happening. It's all fine. <laughs> with the Mandalorian, right. which is great. Right, well, here's the thing. Fine TV show is fine, right? Like, they can totally just be like, oh, well, we don't need to keep people trapped. They'll come back eventually. Like, a lot of people will just go, okay, I'll skip a couple months or, you know, I'll just pay for a month when there's something that seems interesting and I'll wait for it to be done and then watch it all. I mean, I think the trap of streaming shows is most people get a subscription and then forget about it. Like they'll watch it every now and then whenever they feel like watching something, but they're not actively thinking, should I unsub this month? <laughs> right? I well, don't think that's because the economy gets worse. People are starting to think that. Stuff oh yeah. Sure. I, I think they'll absolutely think that stuff. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to just be worried about it if I was them and look, every streaming service and every TV network back in the day, what they wanted was a hit. They hmm. wanted a Mandalorian. They wanted a Game of Thrones, right? <laughs> they wanted something that took over the culture for a mm-hmm. while. Because that's yeah. the thing that gets people to show up in droves to watch their channel or sub to their streaming service. Sure. So yeah, fine is fine. But I guarantee the Disney overlords are like, we got to hit on one of these in <laughs> phase four. We didn't. Maybe I hope we can hit on one in game in phase five. That'd be super cool, but it's not a guarantee, right? <laughs> Uh, how so much they want it, but because <laughs> I mean, I I guarantee you they're still making money. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't think they're broke, but <laughs> the Disney overlords are not like 
Ah, uh, profits went down twenty percent. We're still well in the green here. <laughs> no, no, you no. Guys no. Are doing I, I'm fine. I'm saying that when you have Thor, it's domestic, uh, not domestic, worldwide is six hundred and one million dollars. You still look at that and go, "It's a success. That was a smash hit. People turned out in droves to see that." Like, I think that's. I don't know if Disney perf- sees it that way. I, I'm sure that's perfectly. Everything's fine. Like. <laughs> I don't. I think they understand that they can't make you know a billion and a half dollars on every movie, and that for a Thor movie that's perfectly good, right? And like they're like, yeah, we're good. We're everything's fine. I don't think they're like, oh my god, panic crisis. We didn't make a billion dollars. I don't think that's happening. I guarantee they looked at Spider Man and said, why can't you all do this, my children? Why can't you all be doctors? I'm not saying they're rational and logical about it at all. They're not. They're totally irrational and illogical, and I'm sure they get mad about it. Mm. I'm sure they looked at the box office for Thor, and they're like, we need to have talks with Feige and maybe, you know, with Taiko Atiti and be like, hey, how can we get do better next time? Mm. That's all. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're not involved in any of those meetings. Nope. No. Anyway, yeah, MCU. Bleh. <laughs> the end. The end. We'll see. We'll see what they come up with. Man. Yeah. What else is happening? Uh, mm. So I watched the terminal list on Amazon Prime over the last couple of days. My brother talked to me about that. Yeah. Okay. I have not watched it. Is it good? Right. It's, mm, it's a very interesting thing. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, just going to tell you the reason why I think it's interesting. Sure. So. It starts off being very gun culture, military culture, masculinity, bro culture stuff, right? Right. It's very much that. Mm-hmm. It establishes it hardcore. It's like, my life is killing foreigners and protecting the people that I love, right? Sure. With my bros. And then it very quickly descends into everything sucks for this guy Mm. and long story short our main character chris pratt ends up on this revenge tour where he wants to absolutely straight up murder people that he feels are responsible for what happened to him okay so this could have been like a american hero is wronged and he loses everything and he's gonna kill the people responsible like a rambo or jason (laughs) Bourne or something right Right. But it's very, very clearly communicating through his friends and associates who are helping him do this, that what he's doing is bad and wrong and really screwing him up and not bringing him the peace or any kind of resolution that he's looking for. Right. So it's not like a... It's Yeah, it's not a feel-good thing at all. (laughs) It is so depressing. Okay. And I'm like, how did... How did this happen? How are they like, we're going to make a show that is relentlessly bro gun military culture and then be like, actually, (laughs) all these things that you guys like, not really fulfilling and not good. Revenge is bad. And it's like, but wait, what? How did I don't know. I don't know how it happened, but I was interested in it and I kept my attention the whole time and it was good. But man, the ending is a downer. (laughs) Yeah. uh, The whole thing is honestly. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on my list of things to watch. Yeah, I just I'm Which, trying to think of other things that exist out there that are comparable because there have mm-hmm. been like war is bad movies, mm-hmm. right? And there have been, you know, the other side war is awesome movies, mm-hmm. but I've never seen a show that was so interested in showing both sides of that at the same time in the same show. Mm-hmm. That's all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chris Pratt's good. I think he's fine. <laughs> he, was, he was believable in the character that he was. <laughs> He's believable. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Chris Pratt starring Chris Pratt in Chris Pratt, the movie. <sighs> I'm just thinking of Chris Pratt being... Oh, are you frozen? Mm. Oh, I think we lost Falcon, guys. Hello. I'm just thinking of Chris Pratt as being tapped to play Mario in the upcoming Mario movie. Mm-mm. No bueno. Don't like it. Falcon, what happened, buddy? 
I'm coming through, but you can't. Okay, so I'm coming through, and he can hear me. He just. Mm -mm. You you want to try leaving the call and coming back in? <laughs> yeah. See, he drops instantly. Oh, oh, oh! My face is on two sides of the broadcast. This is a visual gag for people who are listening. Oh, visual gags. Oh, he's back. Is he back? <laughs> oh, there we go. He's back. <laughs> That was fun. I could see you dancing between the two panels. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm back. Okay, you're back. Yeah. It was Discord's fault. That wasn't my fault. Yeah. Screw you, mm -hmm. Discord. Fuck you, Discord. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right. So Chris Pratt's not winning any Emmys for this. I heard you mention him being the voice cast for Mario, which is I, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um actually I went to I went to watch a Chris Pratt movie yesterday because I saw oh, yeah. that the new Jurassic World movie. Domin uh, uh, Dominion or Domination, I can't remember what it's called, uh, is apparently already out on streaming in America. <laughs> Not here. You can't. I can't watch it on Amazon Prime Video or uh, on. I can't rent it on YouTube or, or the Microsoft Store in Australia. There's like no. You you can do all these things if you had a US based uh, like billing address, but nope. Not me. That's so, weird. I gotta yeah, wait. It could be available. Yeah, I gotta it's wait. Bad. <laughs> I mean, I, the last one was bad. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But, also, but, this one's bad. Like, but this the, one's bad in ways that are like, what? What is the plot? <laughs> I mean, why the, are there not dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a dinosaur movie. I like dumb dinosaur mm, movies. They're they're, they're, they're fleshy it? transformers. Right? Like, is it a dinosaur movie? Yeah, there's dinosaurs in the movie. Yeah, are there as many dinosaurs as you want to be? Probably not. I mean, uh, look, they keep killing them all. <laughs> like, yeah. in the last movie, they <laughs> they were like, "Crap, we're gonna go to the island before the volcano erupts." <laughs> like, uh, herding like the them dinosaurs? onto ships, and then they sell yeah. them to like foreign um, businesses and dignitaries to like gene yeah. breed them into um, war machines and stuff. It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. No. So um, let me tell you something about this movie. Just one thing. I'm going to spoil okay. it for you. So the start of the movie is like humans and dinosaurs living together. Crazy zany stuff. I wonder how that's going to work. And then it drops it. <laughs> it never goes back to that plot for the rest of the film. Mm. So how fun is that? <laughs> uh, Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's I don't bad. care. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy it. I do. Oh, I, I will. Whenever it becomes available to you. When, when there's someone being chased by a dinosaur and they're running, and they're like, yeah, this is good. Oh, I like this. This is worth my time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think it has that. <laughs> Chris Pratt's going to be standing there with a knife and he's going like, to be like, down, Blue. I'm on your side, Blue. And then, <laughs> then Blue's going to be like, hmm, I fucking don't trust you. You're one of them humans. And then Blue's like, ah, you're all right all along, Chris Pratt. It's fine. There you go. I was That's good to put my line. That that's the storyline in the both the first two Jurassic World movies. Oh, <laughs> don't <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> excited uh, about that. Okay, well, good. Um, I hope it's a wonderful time for you. Mm. So, like Chris Pratt always kind of has an underpinning of Andy and Parks and Rec. Mm. Where there's a little part of me that's always like, you're kind of a goofball. <laughs> so he's right. always kind of a goofball. It's just who he is. Uh -huh. So I do think maybe the, the show would have been a little different casting someone who can just play hard in Navy SEAL, who's been mm. doing this for 30 years and is just like a rock, right? It is Chris Pratt the new Mark Wahlberg? Because Mark Ooh. Wahlberg did Shooter and like Lone Survivor. And which he's are kind of a like goofball. Yeah, he's kind of a goofball as well. Marky Mark right. and Funky Bunch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I think you're right about that. That's a great comp. Mm. Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg and Chris Pratt are the same dude. Yep. <laughs> uh, Anywho, like production quality is really good. Like it's not a movie. You can tell they didn't have, you know, a hundred million dollars to work with, but right. you know, they had some quality acting and quality production on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was the director? I was like, who is that guy? I think he was a Game of Thrones director that I really liked back when Game of Thrones was good. <laughs> back when Game of Thrones was good. Yeah. Uh, it was so long ago. It was. 
it's a sad thing. Um, oh, mm-hmm. and then people are like, there's going to be a Terminalist season two. And I'm like, oh. how? Uh, Frederick E.R. Toy. No, Toye. Anton Fuqua. Oh, Anton Fuqua. They had different directors for each episode. Uh, some of them did too, but yeah. Yeah, like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones did the same yeah. thing. They'd have different directors. And they'd come back. They'd do more. Mm-hmm. But Antoine Fuqua did the first episode, and he's... What do I know his name from? He did Training Day, The Magnificent Seven, The Equalizer, Southpaw. Actually, some of these are producer credits. So what's he directing? The Equalizer 3, Shaka, King of the Zulu Nation, uh, Emancipation, Legacy, The True Story of the L.A. Lakers, uh, The Guilty, sp- The Day <laughs> Sports Stood Still, uh, What's My Name, Muhammad Ali, American Dream, Slash American Nightmare. Did you say Training Day? Training Day, yeah. Yeah. That's probably training the Training Day is really good. That might be it. That's what I hear. Yeah. So interesting. I thought he didn't, you know, this list of directors they had. More people than I thought. Ellen Kuros, MJ Bassett. I don't know any of these names. He did yeah, a so lot of music videos in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too on his Wikipedia page here. Like he did um, Gangster's Paradise. Oh, really? Big music video, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Yeah, Antoine Fuqua, cool dude. Yeah, so he did the first episode, which is usually what they do for these things. They bring in a huge name to do the pilot, but they don't want the director doesn't want to commit to eight episodes or something. So they're like, do oh. this, and then you can go. <laughs> he directed in two thousand seven, Shudo with Mark Wahlberg. Oh, perfect! <laughs> they're like, we have the new Mark Wahlberg. Bring in Antoine Fuqua. He knows how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, we figured it out. That yeah, honestly, that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ugh. like, I don't want to do your whole TV show, but I'll do one episode. And then I'm like, fine, do the pilot. We'll drag people in with your name, and then you can go. You can do more music <laughs> videos if you want. We'll pay. I don't think he's done a music video since the nineties. I'm looking at it. <laughs> well, if you wanted to, I'm sure they'd let him. Uh, probably, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can just always tell directors who have music video backgrounds because there's more cutting, mm. a lot more camera movement. Uh, that's where, uh, God, what's his name? The director that everyone hates who did Transformers and stuff. Michael Bay. Yeah, Michael Bay got to start in commercials. You can totally uh, okay. tell. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Transformers movies are just really long commercials. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, think someone broke, I think someone broke it down for... Um, the shit uh, age of extinction where there was an advertisement every 36 seconds there was a product placement every 36 seconds like on average yeah. yep which when you're blowing up half a city block and a thousand cars you need money you gotta get funding somewhere no it's expensive crazy yeah. expensive yeah mm-hmm. yeah i do i do remember Someone, I watched a music, uh, a music video, a YouTube video about this a few years ago mm-hmm. where it was like, uh, it was, it was like all this destruction in a city and a Budweiser truck rolls by <laughs> <laughs> like right in the center frame. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Like I had to well, pay for the scene with Budweiser money. Have you not seen Age of Extinction? Like, have you not actually sat down and watched that movie? I've only watched the first Transformers film, which was fine okay. for what yeah. it was. The first, one, like... the first one's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So in he's blowing up half the city and then the Budweiser truck explodes. And then Mark Wahlberg's spaceship crashes into like a dude's car and he gets out. And, like dude's like, I hope you've got insurance for that. And <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's like, insurance, it's an alien freaking spaceship. What the hell do you want about? It? He picks up a Bud Light or a Budweiser or whatever it is, cracks it on the uh, on the car, and then chugs it into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not even like trying. That's not even trying to hide it. You're just like, nope. Eh, nope. It's advertising. Deal with it. Welcome to your movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, Transformers movies. Mm. 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 I've, I've got a list of personal quotes here from Antoine Fuqua on his IMDb oh. page. Oh boy, I don't know about this. Personal <laughs> quotes from celebrities are never good. Because movies are human drama. That's it. 
Was that like an answer to a question? <laughs> I don't know. There's no, there's no context for these. He just like wandered into <laughs> like a diner somewhere and just said, movies are human drama. That's it. And then he walked out. That's I really like the opportunity to make films. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely separate quote. I like making movies. <laughs> I only pay to take my son to the movies because most of the times I watch European movies, independent movies, or screen them privately. But I like to go with my movies. You know, go to the son with my, uh, go to the movies with my son because it reminds me why I make movies. Which um, fine, but they've got that listed three separate times, <laughs> right? Like quote? he's slightly very different variations of it yeah it's like his best quote they're like we gotta (laughs) (laughs) we gotta repeat it a few times here i guess Mm -hmm. oh that's good well good job antoine keep it rolling uh there's Mm. more (laughs) you want to keep going you're talking about gsl Uh, uh, we can talk about gsl i mean did you have another good quote oh i believe in god absolutely (laughs) That's oh, okay. the, that's, that's the next one. short one. Yep. It's yeah. Nice and short, and he's just absolute about it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All right, so GSL? Yeah. So GSL happened since the last pod, right? Uh, I don't know. I love it when I search for GSL, and every time I'm in Google, I always want the Global StarCraft 2 League. I always get GSL Fab, which is a metal fabrication place in Sydney, apparently, and it's like, what? you know I don't want that. <laughs> Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. Look, eventually it should figure it out. It should. It doesn't. It's um, autocomplete. I don't. When were, when were these played? played yeah, so uh, Dark and Maru and, and Hero and Bunny were like two days after the podcast last week. Were they? Okay. Yeah, so the semifinal on the pod. I uh, will take you out for it. Yep. So the final is in three days. Mm hmm. But yeah. Sure. The Dark Morrow series was great. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, ju- it I mean, Morrow's is really good with this style that he's figured out. Mm. <laughs> it's it's kind of turtle mech. He kind of gets onto four bases and it's just like, come get me. <laughs> and the Zerg is like, all right, here we come. And it just doesn't work out as well as they want to. Mm. And then he's just very patient. He's It's like the opposite way you're supposed to play against Zerg. He right. just kind of holds back. Every once in a while, he'll jump some battle cruisers across the map or go for a hellbat attack somewhere, but vast majority of the time he's defending. Hmm. And then he just eats resources and puts the Zerg into a non-economic viable position and kills some of the bases that are closer to him because those are the ones a Zerg player took most recently, right? That's how these maps work. So he's doing a and very then, efficient style is what I'm hearing? Like He's incredibly- just like, I'm going to trade better than you. Like. Yeah, it's okay. just I have no intent on killing you in the first 15 minutes of this game. Mm. Which is so weird in TVZ because usually it's like you got to be dropping constantly and doing run bys and right. setting it's... up tanks and ambush positions. And he's just like... Mm. <laughs> it's a it's a radically different Maru than the guy who pro- proxied Rax across the other side of the map for a year and a half. Yes, right? <laughs> radically. Everything is different. Hmm. Yeah, and That's then eventually he just gets up to like a 20 ghost group with Thors mm-hmm. and some Hellbats in case a bunch of Lings and Mainlings show up and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he just makes good trades. And the Zerg's like, Swarm Hole? It doesn't really work. And then they're like, Brutal Lords? <laughs> and that doesn't really work. And then they die. It's the craziest thing. It's amazing. Zergs have right. not figured this out yet at all. Hmm. Well, because he, he took kicked... down Dark with it and he beat Rainer with it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kicked their butts. And now he's got to face Hero. Hero, yeah. Hero just like smashed Bunny by the looks of it. 3 1. Yeah. Pretty good series, Pretty I'd good. say. There were some good matches in there. I think that whole thing was about an hour and a half, almost two hours. So good, mm. good macro games in there. Mm hmm. Yeah, Hero's just looking great. He's looking like he's figured a lot of this out. His PVT looks good. His PVZ looks really good, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I don't know. Is he going to give Maru what he can handle? I think so, but I still think Maru's probably your favorite. Yeah, I think Maru's definitely the favorite to win here. Um, I mean, Hero did just beat Maru, did he not? 
Yeah, in the group yes. they were in the same group, and Hero so got out Mar first. Oh no, Maru Mar two, two one him, him. him, and then Maru just kind of like didn't really care because he knew he got out the second day, so he just let Dig two zero him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's only they only matched up once, and Maru took two games out of the best of three against him. Right. And the only other yeah. Maru versus Protoss game was it back in Group Stage 1, Group B. He two a creator. Um, so I don't know that that means much. When was this? This was in Group Stage 1 for the GSL. Group B. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, creator's playing pretty well, so that's pretty impressive, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, he got into the second round of groups. Yeah, for sure. No. Creator's good. Um, Maru's looking pretty good against Protoss is what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he is. He's looking good against everything. Like, Maru is top of his game almost right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's won a bunch of GSLs, so it's not like <laughs> he's never been here before, but it's just, right. I don't know, for the last two years, it's like, oh, what's Maru doing? He's kind of falling apart. Nope. Mm. He's back. He's back. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. Is that no, fair Maru? to say? Um, well, here's the thing. I would only say he's back if he went somewhere. And he didn't really disappear. It's not like he was, like, no. bombing out in the Rad of 16s. It was like, okay, he had a couple of, like, not making it to the finals, but he still was in the playoffs. True. And he's, it's, this is, like, a innovation sort of run for him, where he's like, yeah, I'll win one Premier Tournament every year for eight years, but I'll always be, like, top ten, <laughs> even when I'm not winning. And it's just... It's expected. Yeah. I mean, yes. That's the thing. Fun. If your best is top of the mountain, <laughs> then any amount of slippage on that feels like <laughs> you're falling off the mountain, right? Yeah. Well, it certainly looks that way, but it's not. Yeah, it's not fair. <laughs> right. It's not fair to see it that way at all. No. Um, yep. Yeah. So that should be good. I'm really excited for that one. Mm, mm, me too. As the comments on every GSL VOD talk about, there's only 14 more Tastosis commentaries left, you guys. We gotta, we gotta go. appreciate them. Well, we gotta go to Korea for the next season of GSL. We gotta, <laughs> we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta go see that before they disappear. I think everyone's feeling that way. Yeah. I looked at how much a flight costs a career, and it's like, oh, man, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, more yeah, than you're expecting. It, it was like seventeen hundred dollars. Whoa! Yeah. Now I gotta look. Flights to Seoul. Internet says a thousand dollars on Air Canada. Yeah, Canada. No. Oh. But that ooh, that's an extra day of flying compared to the <laughs> other ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> That are fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But if, I mean, it's direct from Salt Lake City to Seoul. Like that's pretty amazing. No stopovers, no layovers, no nothing. The cheapest flight I've got from Sydney to Seoul is nineteen hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Uh, and that's a ten-hour flight time or travel time. Uh, yeah. The quickest. Well, it's ten hours and thirty minutes. I should. Let me be specific. If I wanted to select the quickest flight, it's four thousand six hundred and fifty nine dollars, and it is oh ten gosh. hours and twenty five minutes. Ooh, cut some time off there. Save a whole five minutes. My fastest one's about sixteen hours. I don't think you can do much better than that. No, you're coming for a bit further away. Yes, the other yeah. side of the globe. Yep. Yeah, Tastosis was very. They're trying to be very clear that if you show up now, you have to have a ticket. You cannot just show up to the studio and be like, I want to get in. They won't let you in. Right. I don't even know where you'd buy tickets. I don't either. I'm sure there's a website, but they're saying there were people that came from like California. Oh, that's rough. To play. watch. And they're like, you have a ticket? And they're like, no. It's like, oh, I can't come in. It's like, oh. <laughs> right. Sucks. Sucks. Can I buy a ticket here? Mm-hmm. No, nope, apparently not. You can't buy a ticket at the door. No. Mm. I'm going to Google uh, this. How do I buy tickets to see GSL? I found a Reddit post where someone's asking that very same question. And there are answers? No. <laughs> Nothing that I saw that was like on this link. Um, there is a soulinspired.com link. 
Oh, GSL. Da -da -da. Location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. I've got Soul Inspired, the website. Oh, yeah, I've there. got that. Okay. But there's no, like, how many tickets would you like to buy? <laughs> it's like, oh, if you go to Seoul, you'll need a 4G unlimited SIM card, a universal power adapter. Here's where you can buy those. <laughs> um. Oh, well, this, okay, so the website says, once you're inside the GSL studio, grab a free ticket from the attendant at the front desk. <laughs> that doesn't sound like what's happening now at all. No. The website is a lie. Mm -hmm. it's old, it's thing. This is probably yeah. posted, like, oh, yeah, January 2020. This is pre-COVID. <laughs> this is, like, everything. So it's just pre-COVID, yeah. Then everything changed a month and a half mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. I bet if you asked on the Pylon Show Discord, they would tell you. I bet if you just tweeted at Autosis, he might say. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I could DM him because he <laughs> responds to my DMs. Well, I feel like if you DM, it makes it personal. And like then you've got an obligation to show up because you're asking him for the information. <laughs> no way. He'd forget instantly. I'd be like, yo, Artosis, how do you get tickets? He's like, here's the link. Thanks. Bye. And he would never think about that interaction ever again. Mm, Guarantee. Yeah. We'll tell you what, you you DM him in a week, I'll tweet at him and be like, hey, do you remember the last time Falcon DM'd you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean, yeah, probably not. Uh, probably not. Anyway, yeah, GSL, hooray. Yay. Did DreamHack finish up before? Yeah, yeah DreamHack's done. The last pod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time has no meaning. It sure doesn't. I thought we talked about this. Because Dark One, right? We talked about that. Yeah. Dark actually beat Mara. <laughs> yeah. It was a 4 3. Yeah, this was a. We talked about this. It was yeah, a, like did. a game seven situation. Yeah. The yeah. thing that did also end was Home Story Cup. Oh, that's right. That's right. Home Story and Cup. And Sarah became the first person to win it four times. Yeah. Because Sarah's the goat. Apparently. Yeah. Straya took a map off of him. Oh. And then you know had the player cams and Cyril like leaned forward in his chair and I was like, mm. oh Straya's dead. And he was dead. <laughs> Did he roll up his sleeves, take off his hoodie, and like <laughs> crack his knuckles? <laughs> no. Nope. He just he just focused a little bit there. Push the glasses up on the bridge of his nose. Like <laughs> <laughs> Man, Clem is always a fun to watch in TVZ's. Mm -hmm. Um. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. What am I looking at here? I'm on the wrong home story cup, I think. Sure. Clem beat, yeah. uh, Cyril beat Clem in the grand yeah. finals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's that weird format where it's two best, like a best of five and a best of three. Uh, yeah. I don't. Yeah, because Cyril oh, won the came first from... best of five, and then they were like, because he came, oh, that's right. Because he, he came, came from, from the, the losers. Right, so it's like a it's a best of three, and if Clem can win, then it's over. But if Sarah wins, it turns into a best of five, and they oh a, a best of seven or whatever after that. Is my understanding? Yeah, like it's so, so strange. The way it looks, Sarah wins the first whatever against Clem three one, and then he wins the second one two zero. Oh. So what? Uh, I don't I don't know. This is weird. <laughs> it so, is weird. Uh, is there any like playoffs? Like for the grand finals, a like best of five have played. If the player coming from the winner bracket wins that, the player won the match. If the player coming from the loser bracket wins the best of five, which Cyril did, then there is an additional best of three will be played to determine okay. the overall winner. Yeah. So he had to win a best of five and a best of three, best of three. which he did. Yeah. So if Clem had won the best of five, then he would have just won. Yes. Got it. That, that's like the advantage for getting through on the upper bracket. Is you just win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, he did great. Again, Clem TVZs are always amazing. Yeah. He's see? just everywhere. He just can't quite push through most of the time. Mm. Having some issues. Well, I mean it's Cyril. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh man. He couldn't beat literally everyone at Home Story Cup. He lost to, <laughs> you know. One of the greatest Zerg players of all time. What's wrong with Clem? It's just like, look, right. it's just, it's sterile, man. <laughs> he beat him once already, and then he had to do it again, and he couldn't do it. It's like, well. Oh. 
Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I don't know what to say because it's Clem and it's Raynal. Uh, it's Serral. Serral's really yeah. good. Losing to Serral is no shame. No shame. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I like watching Clem's style because he is, he does the Terran everywhere, dropping constantly, never letting the Zerg player catch his breath. Mm. And the way you beat that is you defend like a god and you just don't take. <laughs> You know, you're taking some damage from it because it's impossible mm. to perfectly handle this. Right. But Serral's just like, I'm just not going to take enough damage to where I'm weakened mm. at, you know, the 15 minute mark when you actually come to kill me. Right. Because that's the plan is you weaken mm. the Zerg player and then you make a push and then you can take him down if they're weak enough. But Serral was just like, I'm not, not going to take enough damage to where that's a thing and you're going to go for that push and I'm going to be very scary and you're going to die. Right. Because Serral perfected the strategy of defend, 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 defend. So he can do it. Mm -hmm. It's like he's the worst Zerg player possibly to try to do this strategy against. It's just tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good man, Serral. Four times more than anybody else has. They were saying on the telecast too that mm, the repeat winners, the people who have won three or two in a row, are always in a row. It's never like somebody wins a home story cup and then they win one three years later. It's like they win and then they win again. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And then they win again <laughs> and then they never win again. <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> so Cyril doing it this way is a little weird too because, you know, his wins have come kind of staggery. Right. Yeah. Well, Anywho, Cyril's great. <laughs> I really, well. really wish Cyril would perf compete in GSL. I just want him to move to Korea for a year. And just compete in GSL. Just do it. Just answer all the questions that everyone has. So and all the GSL stands who are like, if you don't win a GS, GSLs are way more impressive to win than, you know, WCS, ESL premier events. It's like, I get mm. your argument. And I think I agree with you. And it'd be nice if Sarah would just deal with it. <laughs> Go live in Korea for a year, man. <laughs> you can do it. I mean, he could. Just don't know that he wants to. Right. Doesn't need to. Um, so I'm looking at the who's won. Uh, oh, Sorry. that's why. <laughs> I was looking at like, who's won uh, Home Story Cups to see if they're in a row. And I was just like, they've got the winner lineup and then the runner up column. And I was getting them mixed up. Because I'm like, uh. dude, no one here is winning in a row. Like Snoot won, then <laughs> Keon, then MC, then Flash, then Fire Cake. What the hell? And I'm like, oh, no, no. <laughs> that was Taja, 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 Taja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no 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 okay it is right. definitely more or less in a row for a lot of people uh actually specifically tasia zest and then Cyril. Uh, right yeah everyone else is kind of one and done mm -hmm. and again home white story Cup is a... winning games <laughs> who white raw yeah for yeah. sure he won home what? story cup too yeah uh-huh he had a legit StarCraft 2 career. He's mm -hmm. definitely more of a Brood War guy, but he mm -hmm. did an okay transition to StarCraft 2. Not bad yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? And Homestar Cup's a weird thing, too, because mm -hmm. it's traditionally a lot looser. It's a lot less serious for some of these players. And Right. It's, it's a good time, first and foremost, yeah. for everyone. Like, they're bullying Cyril on the couch, trying to make him cast, and... You know, <laughs> right. it's a good time. It's like in a bar, <laughs> like yeah, exactly. Players yeah. are playing drunk, like whatever. It's it's home story mm -hmm. cup. Home story cup. The winner gets a captain's hat. <laughs> Lincoln has to wear it <laughs> while they play the next <laughs> season or whatever. Yeah. Right, right, right. So winning home story cups <laughs> a little bit weirder than winning another premier tournament, but you know mm -hmm. the competition's always pretty good. Mm -hmm. Some players didn't couldn't come. There's a decent list of players that didn't come to home story this year, but. Mm. We got Sarah, we got Clem, we got Rainer was here, right? Uh I don't remember. Um Sarah has won Home Story Cup six times. He won two stay at home story cups as well. Dang. Okay. He is, there you go. He, he is the most winningest player. He really oh. likes the home story cups. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So Rainer, yeah, Rainer got beat by Estrella. Mm. But he was Seriously, playing Protoss. Man. Right? Oh, was he? Yeah, I think Reynold was playing Protoss in this tournament. Mm, according to, Home Story's got him playing Zerg in that series, but what I don't we, know. 
Uh, he was playing Protoss in the groups, but in the playoffs, uh, he switched back to Zerg, it looks like. Yeah. Because I saw a bunch of people talking on Twitter about how he's like he's not doing it to just troll other people. Like he he said like in an interview that he genuinely thinks his uh PVZ is way better than his ZVZ, so that's why he's been playing uh Protoss oh, a bunch. Interesting. And people are like, man, so Rainer was just trolling people doing Protoss, blah blah blah. No, no, no apparently not. <laughs> No, he's yeah. just, he doesn't like ZVZ. I get it. <laughs> I hear you, Rainer. <laughs> uh, truly the man of the people. because he got beat by Estrella, and then he got beat by a laser in the lower bracket, and that knocked him mm. out. So the ZVZ took him down. He yeah. wasn't wrong. ZVZ sucks. I'm with you, Rainer. I hear you all the way. Uh, yeah, here we go. We just got a tweet. For everyone saying I play off race because I want to troll or want to prove something, it's absolutely not like that. If I did, there's a good reason for it. And overall, I feel more confident in PVZ than ZVZ. Obviously, it can go wrong like it did today, but that's just how it works. GG's. Um, that was him saying he off raced and lost. Right. So I'm wondering if. Mm, I don't know. Because it does say that he's playing Zerg, but. I don't know. Mm. Again, in the Home Story oh, Cup. No, no, no. Home it, Story Cup. If you click on the gr- bracket where he's versing a laser, like if you click on the game, the first map, it's got a green tick next to a laser saying he won, but it's also got a Protoss symbol saying that right. Arena was off racing his Protoss in this match. So right. The, the, the color is still red because he is a Zerg player, but he is off right. racing. So he was playing Protoss. So Protoss, Protoss. Yeah. Ah, sneaky. But then against Astraea, he was definitely playing Zerg. So, right. Makes sense. Mm. That's fun. To, I'm interested. Maybe I'll cast a few of his uh, his Protoss games. Always fun when players are off racing. Very fun. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. cast those. Did already play Pack out yet? Doesn't look like it. Mm, Home Story Cup isn't the most professional. <laughs> Was if we've already established, right? Yeah, let's have a quick Google. Mm. No, doesn't look like there's anything out. Someone just saying, Hey, keep an eye on Take TV's Twitter, that's where it'll be. Thanks, Take TV. <laughs> How's it going, Kai? Yeah, we're talking about Home Story Cup. How you doing, man? Ah. <clears throat> so yeah, good StarCraft happening. GSL mm-hmm. still happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For now. Dun, dun, dun. For the now. The future is in question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, fun. What else is happening? Oh, I went and saw Nope with oh, yeah? some of my family last week. Did you nope right on out of there? I did not. I watched mm. the whole thing. You could have just said nope. That would have been funny. That would have been funny, but I'm not funny. Uh, yeah, it was good. I mean, okay, so it's, you know, Jordan Peele's version of horror comedy. <clears throat> it's not horror horror. Mm-hmm. Laughed a lot. I think I laughed the most in this one of any of his movies. Um, okay. Some really funny stuff happening, which is great. Um... And yeah, I went into it not knowing anything, which I do try to do for movies that I'm going to go see. Mm -hmm. So that was good. I think if I had gone in knowing certain aspects of what the movie was going to be about, it would have been maybe less impactful. I actually listened to a podcast where some people were saying, this one dude was saying that he knew what the movie was about. And when Mm. he was watching the film, he was waiting for it to happen. Right? So he was waiting on a thing to occur that he knew was going to happen. And I didn't have that. So I didn't have any anticipation. I was just enjoying what was going on. Mm -hmm. I think that was probably a better experience. Fair enough. That's usually how it goes. Yeah, good stuff. Kind of less social messaging in this one. Like us and Get Out have some really big messages to kind of talk about with regards to society. Mm. This one less so. There's definitely some in there, okay. but there's definitely less of it. It's just more, I'm going to make this comparison. I don't want to sound it insulting, but it's more M. Night Shyamalan. 
Oh, jeez. Like, <laughs> okay, okay. More Spielberg than he's no. been in the past. How about that? Still not good for me. <laughs> <laughs> not a huge Spielberg fan. Ah, um, rough. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, maybe, yeah, maybe not your thing, but mm-hmm. um, good. I didn't, I didn't feel like I wasted my money. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Although I'm realizing now, how many movies have I seen recently where I feel like I completely wasted my time on them? And it's like, ooh, mm, not That's an excellent any? question. Hmm. Last movie I watched where I felt like that was a complete waste of my time. Yeah. I don't know. Probably none. Yeah. It's like Hollywood's kind of figured it out where. Yeah, not all going to be home runs, but <laughs> they're just fine. They've, yeah, they figured out how to not make the audience hate them, mm. which is probably a good goal to have. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing the Disney thing. Oh, I right. know the last movie I watched that was probably like a giant waste of my time. Okay. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh, man. Yes, I'm with you on that one. That was a long time ago, though. Yeah, it was 2008. Yeah. Yeah. So if we've gone 10, 12 years, 14 years without feeling like that again, they figured something out. Uh, I mean, there are other movies that I know I've not enjoyed, like Ready Player One that came out four oh. years ago. And I was yeah. still like, ah. but it wasn't, a, <laughs> it's not an entirely bad movie. It's not an utter complete waste of time. Right. It's very much uh, Steven Spielberg doesn't understand or I don't know if it's an issue with how the book was written, but yes. there's just a lot of stuff <laughs> that's like you, you're you showing the real world in comparison to the, the like digital world and they and how they fit side by side, but that's not how they should work at all. Like You just don't understand the medium in which things are happening. Like people, people in the game are running in squads, and all those squads are also running in together in the real world. It's like no, no, no. Those players could be all over the world. Like they don't have to be next to each other. It's not how <laughs> online gaming works, Steven Spielberg. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know if it's just written in the book like that, and it might be because yeah, the book is not particularly good either. Um, no, I read the book. The book is not yeah. good. Yeah. So that's man. We should do book club again. We should do more book club stuff. We gotta read books. Okay. I mean, what? You don't like reading yes. books? You you sound no, unconvinced. Good. Well, you're just like, and this book was bad. We should do more books. Right, but we could pick good books. Like, what a transition. <laughs> we don't have to do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, well, no. I agree. We could do good books. I like good books. Okay. Do you want to pick the first book? Uh, I feel like that's a lot of pressure. It is just a pressure, pressure job, I, though. I, I mean, you want me to pick the first book? Because there's a big list of Warhammer books I can make you read. <laughs> <laughs> see that's the problem here is i, like I don't want to read warhammer books you will once you read them <laughs> okay hang on hang on how do they compare to the good halo books and by the good ones i mean that one trilogy um, written by an actual author uh oh the kilo five trilogy yeah i they're they're comparable um i like really? there are there's a very slim list of like books i think you should read because mm-hmm. uh, there's a sum that are just they're described as bolter porn which is games workshop had this author and this author just wanted to show big strong superhero people um shooting their guns a lot and that's what it is Doing and it's awesome stuff it's 45 pages of dry boring <laughs> like uh battlefield maneuvers more or less it's like he stepped forward fired his bolter boom 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 and it's like that for like 45 pages at a time it's mm-hmm. not great um I, I don't recommend reading those. Okay. Uh, there's a very few select books. That I'm like, yeah, you should probably read these. These are fun. Are they by real life authors who like <laughs> do this for a living and have success outside of the Warhammer franchise? What do you mean? <laughs> I mean that author who did the good Halo books, she's a real life author. Uh-huh. Who had incredible success writing science fiction in other areas and had sold a million copies and Halo was like, write these for us. And she brought the professionalism and her skills with her and they were good. Does this happen with Warhammer? Um, I see. I, I very rarely look at 
the author's works outside of the genre. Okay. Um, I think yes in general, but I All don't right. know. Um, let me let me have a look because there's a particular book that we can start with. Okay. And I'll see what else he has written because the author's name is Aaron Bowden uh, Bowski. Dembski Bowden, excuse me, Aaron Dempsey Bowden. Okay. Let's see what else he's written. Um, hmm. He's written a lot of Warhammer books. <laughs> <laughs> And that might be all he re, uh, writes because mm. uh, he doesn't have like a his own Wikipedia page. <laughs> it's just like immediately links to like, do you want to see his Black Library books? Which wow. are the Warhammer ones. It's not but a good sign. It is a good, it's not a great sign for are they an established author, but it is a great sign that they get keep getting hired to write Warhammer books. If you've True, got, but how high it, is that bar? It's pretty high. You don't know. I've read a bunch of these books. Like the one that I'm gonna recommend is really, really good. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, again, do you want to pick first? No. Okay. Spears of the Emperor. Spears of the Emperor. Spear of the Emperor. Excuse me, it's not plural. <laughs> oh, Spear of the Emperor. Yeah. Google Play Books. Not on Google Play. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is in America. Hmm. No, well, maybe. Um, I believe you can get it on the uh, Amazon. Yes, Amazon it works. is on the Amazons. Yeah. It's got a four and a half star out of five rating on Goodreads. Yeah. That's solid, I guess. Mm-hmm. Four and a half stars so out Goodreads. of Amazon. Nice, nice. Okay, good. I will grab it. And then we'll read it before the next right. pod. Deal. Cool. You read that. I'm going to have to reread it. Okay. Fair. Yep. yep. Bear of the Emperor by Aaron Dembski Bowden. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> Is that going to be it from us? We good to go? Uh, yeah. I think, uh, I think that's about it. Awesome. Oh, did you play Stray? No. Okay. I'm gonna pick it up this week though. We'll talk about that next okay. week too. Okay. Okay. Definitely do that. Okay. Here, I'll pull it up on Steam right now. All right, good. So that is gonna be it from us today. This has been Somicron and Falcon Paladin with another issue of the Falcon Paladin Hour. Cast live at twitch.tv slash Somicron. Also VODs are available on YouTube on Somicron's uh channel. Mm-hmm. And you can also find them on your podcast app. We're kind of behind right now, but uh, just, if you want to watch watch or listen to podcasts from like months ago, then that is where you need to go. They're coming out. They're coming out. I did. I know they are. I've been seeing them. I put. I I got three more ready today before the podcast. I schedule them up. Awesome. Check back at ten a.m. Australian time. There'll be one coming out every day for like the next week. Okay. Yeah. Check yeah. it out. Check out your podcast app. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Mm -hmm. We're on mm -hmm. Spotify, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Spotify owes me a big check, though. I'm like, don't people make money off this thing? <laughs> you owe me a Good check, point. Spotify. Well, it's like YouTube. Like, yeah, they make money off your stuff. They don't give you any until you're big enough. Exactly. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if you want to support us directly and not have us wait for Spotify checks, you can do so <laughs> at patreon.com slash somicron. You can buy merch at falconpaladin.store. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's going to be it from us today. Again, thanks for hanging out. You can buy and until next time, as always, there's some merch you can buy. Yep. Little semi bar. That's what that show's called. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all cool. Right. Stay safe. Stay healthy above all. 